Hello, in this video I will demonstrate a macro which allows to create a custom dynamic user form to manage parameters of any model. This enables a very simple way to enable design automation in your models. Let's start by automating several parameters of this shaft model. This model contains several driving dimensions such as length and diameter. We can download the macro from codstack.net website. Let's navigate to the Solver's Tools section Part Category, Model Configurator. You can read instruction of how to configure and use this macro. For now, I'm just going to copy that source code, come back to SolidWorks, create new macro, set some name, and paste that code into newly created macro. This macro consists of two parts. The second part is user form, so we need to scroll down and copy the corresponding code. We need to assign the configurator form username to the newly created form, otherwise the macro will not work. So let's create a new form. Let's specify the configurator form username. Go to code and paste the code from our buffer. Setup is now complete and we can run and test our macro. In order to run the macro, we need to pre-select the dimension which are going to drive our design. To make things easier, I'm going to show feature dimensions and pre-select those two dimensions. Now let's run the macro. Macro will ask a user-friendly name for each of the selected dimensions. So for the first one we're going to specify length and for the second one radius. As a result of running the macro, we're going to have a new configurator feature in our feature manager tree. We can click edit feature command and modify the input parameters. So let's change our lens to 150 mm and our radius to 25. After clicking apply button, our model is instantly updated. We can edit the definition of our model at any point. So we can always come back to our feature and click edit on the feature in the feature manager tree. We can reuse this macro for any of our designs. So let's make it a bit easier and I'm just going to use custom toolbar to add a custom button to our toolbar to quickly insert the macro into our model. So let's create a new group, call it design automation. Now we can browse to the configurator and just specify the title for that macro, some description and we can also use an icon. So it's going to be displayed in our menu and a toolbar. Currently this macro will only work for parts, so let's enable the part scope for our macro so we cannot run it in any other environment. Now we need to restart SOLIDWORKS to apply the changes. Let's restart SOLIDWORKS. Now we'll be able to find our new design automation command in the menu and also in a toolbar. So let's activate the toolbar and click that button to automate another design. Here's another model I'm going to automate. It has driving parameters for the size of the chest of drawers. Linear pattern drives the numbers of drawers in this design. I'm just going to automate that as well. So let me show all the dimensions and try to pre-select those. As you can see, sometimes it could be quite tricky to select the dimensions as you enter the edit mode. To fix these problems, you just need to click onto the extension line and this will select the dimension. But unfortunately, this trick is not going to work for the dimension which corresponds to number of instances in the pattern, because this dimension does not have extension line. In order to address this issue and disable the behavior of editing by click, simply disable Instance 3D in your model. Now you can easily select that dimension and also all other dimensions. So let's go ahead and pre-select all of our driving dimensions and run the macro. Let's now specify user-friendly names for all our parameters. Now let's hide our dimensions and test the macro. Edit feature and let's modify several parameters of that design. As you can see, model is updated as per our inputs. Furthermore, you can see that number of drawers is changing according to our specified value. Of course, all of the parameters and feature will be preserved in the model, so we can close the model, close our session, reopen the model, and we can still configure our feature. By default, that feature is linked to the macro file, so if we would close our SOLIDWORKS and remove or change the name of our macro file, 
our feature will stop working. Let me quickly demonstrate that. So I'm just going to temporarily rename that SWP file and reopen our model. Now, when we rebuild the model, you can see the error of a missing file. But even more, that feature cannot be deleted from the feature manager tree. Fortunately, you can simply restore that file so the feature can be removed from the feature manager tree. But what if you want to share that model with someone who uses SOLIDWORKS, but you do not want to ask them to put the macro in exact same location as you do? Fortunately, there is an option to embed the macro directly into the model. So let's open our original macro and set embed macro feature flag to true. Let's save the macro and go ahead and insert it again. So I'm just going to show my feature dimensions, pre-select all of the input parameters and run the macro. The process will be exactly the same, with an exception that now macro is going to be embedded directly into the model. That means that feature is no longer linked to the macro file, so you can delete or rename it. Even more, you can send this model without a macro to anyone and they will be able to open it and configure the design. So as you can see, I could configure my model even after I renamed my macro. Please follow the links in the description of this video for the URL for downloading the macro and the tool to manage macros in the toolbar. Thank you for your time.